56 years. That's 20,440 days of turning this into this. Along the way, we built iconic landmarks recognisable around the globe that are synonymous with our national identity. And then there are the places that hold special meaning for us locals. The ones where we played at as children, ate at with colleagues during lunch, and unwinded in with friends after a long and tiring week of work. But what if I were to tell you that as things stand, all these places so dear to us will completely disappear in the not too distant future? Speaking here at Ecosperity, a global sustainability event in 2019, Cristina Figueres, a Costa Rican diplomat, summed up the grim prospect by saying, if the world does not dramatically reduce greenhouse gas emissions over the next decade, gardens by the bay will become gardens beneath the bay. Other prominent cities such as Shanghai and Ho Chi Minh City, who also potentially face such a fate, have huge populations who might be at risk of displacement due to submersion of the land from as early as 2050. At this current rate of rising sea levels, Venice is also projected to be completely submerged by 2100. To ensure that we don't go through a similar plight, actions have been taken by the state to bolster our shores. In 2020, Mr. Heng Sui Kiet revealed a plan. No, not that one. The $5 billion coastal and flood protection plan was announced to help Singapore mitigate the risks of rising sea levels. The main strategies would involve the engineering and construction of sea walls, land reclamation, as well as nature-based solutions. All of this was announced earlier during 2019's National Day Rally by PM Lee, who said that since rising sea levels was a long-term problem, we would have the luxury of finding a long-term solution. He even estimated that $100 billion would be spent in the next 100 years, at the very minimum. These include building an additional pump house next to Marina Barrage to pump out excess water into the sea should there be flooding, as well as polders and dikes a combination of reclaimed land and accompanying drainage system to push back water from the sea. The battle against rising sea levels is a daunting one. But if you're feeling helpless, don't be. Here are some small things we can do to play our part. When working from home, always turn on the fan instead of the air conditioning. Also, try to use less paper when you take your notes. Use your laptop instead. But if you really have to, just remember, reuse, reduce, and recycle. Keep a pet plant. It's therapeutic and it's one of the best ways to combat global warming as plants absorb carbon dioxide from the surrounding air. If you're headed into the office for a meeting, take the bus instead of a private vehicle. Better yet, ride a bike. It doesn't add to your carbon footprint at all, and every day becomes leg like day. Earlier this year, AIA Singapore pledged $5 million to 1 million trees movement, a nationwide effort to plant a million trees in Singapore over 10 years. Don't worry, I did the math. $5 million equates to over 16,000 trees, which in turn absorb up to 400 tonnes of carbon dioxide from surrounding air every year. That would go a long way in our nationwide endeavour to stave off climate change. If you're not already terrified by the thought that our sweltering tropical island will get warmer as a result of climate change, think about what else is at stake. These national landmarks that we have come to know and love will soon be under threat of disappearing under the sea forever, just like the ancient city of Alexandria. But more than that, it's about making sure that our descendants still have a Singapore to call their home 50 or 100 years down the road. A cooler, greener Singapore that looks as authentically Singaporean as it does today.